I am finally back. I am no longer sick. It has been a rough week, but I am healthy again. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to a brand new episode of the NASCAR Heat 5 Career Mode. I hope you're all having a great day. Today, we have some Cup Series racing from the Tricky Triangle at Pocono Raceway. Yeah, I've been uh, sick for the last week or so, uh, which is why there's been an absence in videos. Uh, if you've been wondering, I didn't say anything at all. Uh, but yeah, we are back, and we're ready for the push to the playoffs now and we can kind of get on the grind and, and get season two concluded go into season three and, and kind of see where things go from that point on now there's something big following this episode that is important now the bracket challenge will be kicking off following this race so basically what i'm going to do at the end of this episode the top 32 full-time drivers and points will be all put into a bracket system and i will be doing a separate video following this one uh, probably this will be coming out on Wednesday there will probably be a bracket video coming out on Thursday going over the bracket and as well a link for you to basically hopefully fill out your own bracket uh, and just for bragging rights and see who can get it right and whatnot and then of course it will start officially in the next episode uh, with the actual bracket challenge for the next five races to basically take us to the end of the regular season this was an idea presented by Denny Hamlin and NASCAR is now backing this heavily in the career mode as I had a bit of an incident in practice and that's I think the first practice incident we've had all season long so a bit of a rough start coming back into the car after being sick uh, but yeah the top golf machine absolutely destroyed going into qualifying but we were hopefully uh, gonna have a bit more pace but yeah uh, we got Bush Light behind this bracket challenge in the career mode and the winner uh, of the bracket challenge uh, the driver that you know comes out on top will be getting one million dollars so we'll wait and see how that works itself out but qualifying now uh, we focus in on our lap here uh of course a three turn track or a five turn track six turn track really whatever you want it to be uh we come through this tunnel turn here doing pretty well and on the run down towards we'll use the official terms uh for this episode turn number three uh overall a pretty competitive lap i felt like and we get a good exit there out of the final turn on this long run down towards the start and finish line the goal we're gonna beat it by a whole second we get a 53 903 and we end up p12 uh, which I was pretty happy with, uh, as you can see. Now, the rest of the order on pole. Bubba Wallace actually going to share the front row with uh, Alex Bowman, Chase Elliott, Chris Buescher, Kyle Larson, the top five. Austin Hill, part-time driver for Richard Childress Racing, might be looking at full-time next season. Uh, currently P10 in qualifying as you look through the rest of the order. Haley up here in the top 20. Same for Corey LaJoy in the Andretti Global Machine uh, as we look all the way down towards the bottom of the grid. BJ McLeod, Riley Herbst as well. Xfinity was in town, but I was not in the race. We would actually see Austin Hill pick up the victory in the Xfinity Series. SVG, 13th place there as he's in the hunt to get into the playoffs this season. But now we can focus in on Sunday and return to some Cup Series action. We're here from Pocono Raceway, ready to make the final six race push to the playoffs. The Tricky Triangle has created many unique winners in the past, mainly due to weather. It's a beautiful day here today, so how can we see a unique winner today, guys? A late race yellow just like last week, Rick. We saw total strategy chaos get Chastain the win. It can happen again today. No matter what I think, it will be hard to beat the 23 car today, guys. All right, bud. I hope you enjoyed the summer break. Let's make that playoff push. Yes, sir, 10-4. hope you guys had a good one, too. Uh, mine was pretty rough, but uh, let's get after it today. Ready to roll in Pocono. Just want to say, of course, Merry Christmas uh, to any of my subscribers that celebrate the holiday. And uh, as well, let me know down below how it was, maybe what you got and uh, whatnot. Uh, best thing I got was uh, a few uh, Formula One uh, Mercedes diecast. That was really cool. Uh, but we're ready to roll. Eric Almarola, Todd Gilliland sent to the back here now as we get ready to roll for the Gander Outdoors 400 in this Top Golf number 16 machine. For Colleague Racing, if you've been out of the loop, we're headed to the number 19 for Joe Gibbs Racing next season in place of the retiring Martin Truex Jr. As we are officially underway in the Tricky Triangle, Bubba Wallace leads away on the run down towards turn one. It's been a rough season for Bubba Wallace. He has the win, of course, in 
Atlanta. It came on strategy, uh, but that was, uh, you know, what allowed him to punch his ticket into the playoffs. It's been a miserable season outside of that now, uh, but here he is on pole today. We'll see what he can do. It's a very short stage, number one. Only a handful of laps. I think it's six laps to be exact. As you see up ahead, Ross Chastain getting after it there, and that number one now side by side with uh, Ty Gibbs into this tunnel turn. You see me cut down all the way to the grass. You want to get right down to that grass in the tunnel turn. There was no harm, no foul going down there, so that's where we want to be uh, in the tunnel turn to be able to maximize the capabilities of this car. Pocono, a difficult track when you're on the inside of someone as Martin Truex Jr. slips up the inside, forces his way through. A bit of a contact moment there between himself and I. We have, of course, had some run-ins uh, as this season has gone on. It's been a bit awkward, of course. You know, last time we won at Sonoma Raceway was a bump and run on Martin Truex Jr. Uh, in the final breaking zone in that final hairpin there. Uh, it's a bit awkward to have a run-in and a bit of a beef with the uh, driver that you're replacing next season. But that put us on the back foot a little bit now. We're behind Austin Hill. Christopher Bell up our inside. Bell been very hot lately here in this career mode now. He slips through into P12. Not a good qualifying effort, but it looks like there is some decent pace in that number 20 uh, as we're able to get past the 33 of Austin Hill. One thing I've always loved about NASCAR Heat 5 and, and their AI is, you know, even though we have modding capabilities to change the ratings of the drivers, you don't really have to throughout the season because sometimes they'll just get on a hot streak. Christopher Bell has been, you know, mediocre all season, and then suddenly he's won two of the last just few races, and he's been really on it now. Chase Elliott, who's dominated the season in terms of race victories has kind of had a rough couple of weeks and here he is again showcasing that down to p12 falling backwards now it looks like hendrick motorsports they had good qualifying pace today but they're not really showcasing the race pace now we're up the inside of elliot in a turn number one up ahead you can see bubble wallace kind of in a league of his own his qualifying time Kind of represented that as well. No one was really able to match what he was able to put down in qualifying. And he is driving away early on here in the race as well. And, I mean, overall, I mean, we have done already a good job this week in recovering from that massive accident in practice. Putting up a decent qualifying effort doesn't quite seem like the car is where it needs to be right now. I did tighten up the car quite a bit going into the race because I was afraid we were going to replicate what happened in practice uh, and that accident in practice was simply the car getting too loose into turn one, me overcorrecting and of course going head on into the outside wall. Thankfully, we don't have an injury out of that one. Speaking of injury, Ryan Blaney, it does sound like he is going to return to Cup Series activity. Uh, unfortunately, uh, going to be a little bit late in this season. He's not going to be coming back until the start of the playoffs. So Ryan Blaney's playoff run not going to happen. He's not going to be in the playoffs. Last season, of course, had a solid season, multiple wins, a decent playoff run. Uh, but yeah, he won't be returning until the end of the regular season uh, due to that concussion. That's been the longest in Injury we've seen of anybody in the NASCAR Heat 5 career mode. Bubba Wallace wins stage number one. A very short stage. We get P12. Not the pace I was hoping for. Usually I have more pace in Pocono. I'm not sure if we just got the setup wrong or, or what. Uh, but uh, I felt like tighter was the way to go for this one. Josh Berry, it looks like he's had an issue on the final lap of the stage. He's actually going to be out of this race. Everybody, of course, going to come into the pit lane here and fill it up on feel, get four fresh tires, but it's Bubba Wallace, Busher, Hamlin, Byron, Truex up there in the top five. Reddick moving his way up forward as well uh, as we're going to add a little bit of tape to the car. Uh, and that was really it now as we gain one spot over Ty Gibbs. And Ty Gibbs right now in a bubble battle between himself, Tyler Reddick as well as Michael McDowell to be in those final spots in the playoffs now. The green flag's back out. Look at the length of stage two compared to stage one. Stage one, only six laps. Uh, we have added eight more here for stage two. 14 to be exact. Elliot, Eric Jones, the rear view mirror. Now McDowell forces a three wide up the inside of Elliot. Caught him off guard right there a little bit. Elliot really doesn't have any need to be too aggressive at this point in the season right now. However, he could still be fighting for a regular season championship. Kyle Larson winless again all season long but he has been so consistently up front uh, that you know he's been able to just kind of run away with this regular season championship has has anybody ever won the regular season championship without winning a race in this playoff era? I'm not 100% sure on that. Someone can let me know down below if I'm wrong, uh, but I don't recall that happening. So this could be the first season that happens. Larson still does have time, uh, of course, to get to victory lane. But if I'm Kyle Larson, of course, you know, winning the regular season has its benefits, getting playoff points, but I want to win races for more. As we now take it three wide, we had a huge run from the slipstream there from the 48 of Alex Bowman. 
Roman Ross Chastain as well and we're trying to stick it up the exit of the corner but just trying to not open up the wheel too much into the door of the one unfortunately couldn't quite get the car to stick and I think this is where uh, the tightness of the setup that I'm running is really hurting me is when a car gets on my outside and you can see when Larson right there was able to get to my outside through the tunnel turn he was able to pass me because I just can't really get the car to rotate through the center uh, of the corner so this is when I'm finally realizing in, in stage two uh, that the direction we need to go in is loosening this car up a bit. You can see me fighting back up the inside into turn one on at Larson. Up ahead right now, it's uh, Bubba Wallace still. Uh, Martin Truex Jr. up to second. Christopher Bell uh, starting to creep his way up there. Uh, into the mix as well as we continue to battle for 10th place with the 5 Gibbs just behind as well uh, but I would fade in a little bit behind Larson we come to lap 5 of the stage and you can see he's all over the back of the number 1 as now through the tunnel turn too tight on the exit of the corner we catch the outside while Gibbs going to look to the inside uh, he's going to be able to go and take that position into turn 3 but yeah really showcasing the tightness in this car right now uh, we've gone we've, we've started the whole weekend the wrong way but the caution is going to come out we're not going to come into the pit lane however uh, everybody is going to stay out it looks like Carson Hosevar uh, Cup Series Rookie of the Year contender is going to be the reason for the caution so two rookies of the day uh, looking like they might be out of their race of course with Josh Berry already being out uh, Vargas and Almarola at the bottom there 38th and 39th the last ones running we get ready to go green we'll be on row number six now on the outside behind that number five of Larson uh, as a green flag is back out here from Pocono Raceway now and this of course took a few laps off only going to be six laps to go so basically we're just going to repeat stage one uh, all over again here uh, from this we start on forward now as we're on board from that front bumper camera Bubba Wallace up front side by side with Truex Chris Busher up there Busher uh, of course has had a few moments of heat this season he was able to get a couple of wins on this season I think most recently if I remember correctly was Darlington uh, but a couple wins on this season for him and he's been kind of cool since then uh, but really showcasing some speed in that number 17 here today I myself trying to get down to the inside that was a late move across the front bumper of that Snapple machine of Eric Jones. One of the brightest uh, cars definitely on the grid this season. D-Money uh, did a fantastic job whipping up that scheme. There's still some schemes that you haven't seen that are in the game and they just haven't been used unfortunately. Uh, there's still some I actually have to put in for my car as well uh, and a few other cars. Daniel Suarez I think is one of them. I have to put uh, another scheme in for but as well I'm going to kind of stretch them out as the next season goes on as well uh, as we're again up the inside of Kyle Larson now through turn number one. Gibbs into the top ten trying to get as many stage points as he possibly can. He looks up the inside of Alex Bowman as well. Uh, through the tunnel turn again just with the tightness of this car. I can't do anything on the inside of these guys. It was starting to, as you could imagine, get a little bit frustrating here now. Uh, as we come through to these closing moments of stage number two. Look at this run we get down uh, the second bank straight away here. But up ahead, it's Bubba Wallace and Truex. They have completely driven away from everybody. So they're in a little bit of a runaway right now uh, as they come to the line. And, and Truex was all over the bumper of that 23. But he hadn't found a way past him yet. Larson had found a way past the 54 in the 48 now was trying to do the same of the inside of Gibbs here into turn number three we have run them down and and when we hit that tunnel turn you know free wide open nobody on our outside we can absolutely haul the mail through there but as soon as the car gets to my outside uh, just with the tightness it was so difficult to actually get the car to get to uh, of course you know get up off the corner my car however so good in the draft you can see that I'm able to just close back in look up the inside but then again I would struggle to complete the pass so it would be side by side again uh, on the run towards that tunnel turn really trying uh, to complete this pass here now but just not going to happen now on Ty Gibbs we could get right on his door right there still not quite enough here on the run through the final turn again not enough so we stay P12 right now uh, as I was uh, starting to honestly com contemplate going to the outside at this point and just see if we can get the car to roll uh, around there. Uh, but we come to the final lap of stage number two Bubba Wallace loses the lead to Truex on the exit of the tunnel turn on the final lap of stage two. He's gonna dominate stage two just like he did stage one and he's gonna have nothing to show for it outside of what looks like to be uh, nine points. We clear Gibbs through the center of three. Truex is going to sure enough win stage number two. We open up the exit of the corner there with the tightness of the car. Gibbs back up the inside hoping 10th place hits the line right now. They do, that's Chastain it looks like. And that will give us uh, P11 
in stage number two. Uh, my teammate of Hemrick has climbed up to 13th and Almendinger as well has climbed up to 15th. So all colleague cars in the top 15 today. Uh, a nice change of scenery here. We're going to come to the pit lane. Uh, and we are going to add more grill tape. And actually, surprisingly, I'm going to tighten it up a little bit. After, you know, complaining about how tight the car has been. Uh, it's a bit confusing, isn't it? But the reason really uh, is there was a lot of confusion uh, with the way this car was driving at this point. Because, yes, it was tight. But on the entrance to the corner as the run was going on, it was starting to get loose. To a point where I wasn't feeling like I could do anything because of that either. So... I really didn't know what to do at this point. Did I want it to be looser? Did I want it to be tighter? I don't know. Uh, it was more uh, of, I was starting to lose soap in this car. This is where I need a real crew chief to be like, hey, here's what you need to do because I didn't know. Uh, and we go down towards turn number one uh, on the start of stage number three. It's 14 laps of racing to go. Chastain down to be 11. Gibbs through into 10th place. Bubble Wallace back to the lead here in Pocono. It's been a dominant day from the number 23. Only one stage one to show for it, but of course still P2 and stage two. Nothing to hang his head low over. And we're going to duck down to the inside, trying to get to the left rear of the 54. Just couldn't quite get there right there uh, on the exit now. Uh, as it's actually, sorry, it's not Bubble Wallace out in front right now. It's still Truex uh, out in front of this race. But Bubba Wallace is right there on his inside left rear quarter panel. I think Bubba's going to be taking the lead probably, uh, you know, within a couple of corners at this point. Now I wash way up on the exit of turn three. We stay ahead of the 31 of Hemrick with the draft. Hold on. Can we maybe go three wide? I thought about it, but then I thought about what happened earlier. It was unsuccessful. Bubba Wallace now officially to the lead again in Pocono Truex back down to second it looks like Busher up into the mix as well and we'll fight back up the inside of Chastain on the exit of turn one it's just been that kind of you know 10th to uh, 12th kind of place day we just really haven't been able to do much else uh, than that now if it stays green, uh, it's going to open up maybe an opportunity for strategy. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, actually, I think we have enough field to get to the end of this race, surprisingly. So maybe that's not actually going to open up any opportunities at all for us. So really, uh, what we actually have to be looking for is a caution. And maybe to get, you know, a benefit here is not taking less tires, but actually taking more tires than the competition on a late race pit stop and see if we can use that to our advantage to just haul the mail through the field because clearly we're not going to break into the top 10. And if we take less tires, we're going to drop like a rock. So really just kind of a, an awkward spot we're in right now and we're just going to have to wait and see how this race plays out and unfolds in, in front of our eyes right now as we continue uh, the same situation that we've continued. Chastain not making it easy on me there, staying on my outside, getting a little bit frustrating. You know, we have struggled all day to pass race cars uh, once the restart's kind of sorted out on the inside and Chastain, well, he's, he's kind of like Ryan Newman. Uh, you know, the only difference is he's fast. Uh, so, you know, you got to battle him, you know, for the lead sometimes. And in four race victories now, Chastain, one last episode. Kyle Larson should have went to victory lane last episode uh, and got that first win of the season. But, of course, with all the uh, late race yellow and the uh, differentiation in strategy, it allowed Chastain to take advantage and instead pick up his third win of the season after starting from the back of the field, by the way, now. So, 10 laps to go. Through the tunnel turn, huge run to the back of that WWE X machine. And do we look to the inside? No, this time I'm going to stay behind because I know it. I just I couldn't pass him. We're in trouble. I mean, this car just, it does not work for us right now uh, as we come through that third turn. So uh, here down towards turn one again, a shot to the back of the one of Chastain uh, still out in front is that 23 of Bubba Wallace and, and Toyota was, was kind of starting to take over as a caution is going to fly with nine laps to go in Pocono opportunity right here so we are going to voluntarily give up track position uh, because look at this it's a really unique scenario the AI are actually going to take no tires so we're going to take two uh, give up the track position look at at the top five four Toyotas in the top five they're absolutely dominating today Bubba Wallace Truex uh, as well as Bell up to third now Hamlin into fifth Alex Bowman having a great run up there in P6, we give up nine positions, so we'll drop to P21. We're back in the Penske land here with Joey Logano. We haven't seen a Penske car all day long, of course. Right now in the playoffs, locked in for Penske Racing, the number two of Austin Sindrick.
uh, after that win earlier in the season with a road course victory under his belt again. Gano yet to go to victory lane, and of course Ryan Blaney had not visited victory lane uh, before the play or before the injury. Sorry, Chase Elliott all the way outside the top 20 as well. You see him in the rearview mirror. We need to get aggressive. Bubba Wallace out in front, three wide with Stenhouse as well as Michael McDowell. McDowell in the bubble fight right now with Gibbs and Reddick. We mentioned that at the start of the episode. I kind of raise those guys differently. Those three, I'm trying to be you know uh, especially free, uh, uh, free not free, but forgiving uh, and just cautious around those guys. Now, now up the inside of the Andretti Global Machine of Corey LaJoy will pass him on the run down towards turn three. Riley Herbst for Rick Ware Racing in P16 on pace. What a run uh, for Riley Herbst here today. And we as well saw Justin Haley have a top 20 qualifying effort as Rick Ware Racing uh, is starting to find some speed here. They're having a great day uh, in Pocono now. Herbst uh, has had more pace in the race than uh, Haley, of course, has had. Uh, but still very impressive. Three wide. John Hunter Nemechek takes his teammate Eric Jones for the position hammock right there in the battle as well but unfortunately you can see we're on lap 37 uh, and Bubba Wallace is now under attack from Christopher Bell uh, for the lead of this race Bell we talked about him earlier getting hot and here he is taking the lead in these closing laps if Bubba Wallace loses this race it is a crime. He has dominated. He lost stage two on the final lap. He's dominated stage three, and now he's about to lose the race in the closing laps as well. Uh, but we're going to hopefully pass this 43 right here into turn three. I'm going to try and throttle up and just complete this pass, but then I actually got a little bit loose, so I couldn't quite, you know, open up that throttle and open up the wheel either. So still side by side, and we've been struggling with the same issue all day long, even with the two tire advantage. It's just so hard for me to actually complete these passes. Uh, but finally, through turn one, we complete the pass on the 43. 20 car of Bell still leading for now, but Bubba Wallace would take it back, approaching two laps to go as we close in on John Hunter Nemechek and our teammate of Daniel Hemrick up to 14th. Now up the inside of the 31 Poppy Bank machine, and we go for that 13th position. Almendinger now up into the 12th position. Two laps to go for Bubba Wallace. It's been a dominant day uh, for the Dr. Pepper machine. Can he cap it off with his second win of the season and what would be his most dominant win since 2010? 22, uh, of course, back at uh, Kansas Speedway in the playoffs. Unfortunately, he did not make the playoffs that year, so it did not get him anywhere. Uh, but here he is leading the way in these closing moments. Now to the final lap in Pocono. The strategy, you know, it didn't work for us. Nothing, nothing worked for us today. It's just, it was a rough day here in Pocono, and I expected a good day. I expected a top five effort. It just didn't happen. Uh, not even going to be a, a top ten effort, but Bubba Wallace, can he hang on? He's been under pressure all day long uh, as he heads down towards that tunnel turn for the final time. It's really, uh, whoever, you know, exits the tunnel turn ahead has got this race won, and they go through the tunnel turn, watch that track map, and it's the 20. Christopher Bell takes the lead in the closing seconds of this race from Bubba Wallace. Oh my goodness, that's going to be heartbreaking, heartbreaking for the 23. We'll go up the inside of the 31. We'll try to pass him into turn three. Bell leads the way out of turn three down the front straightaway. Christopher Bell is going to get win number three here on the season in Pocono. He has gotten hot at the right time. We clear the 31. We'll take P13. Overall, a disappointing day. It's 12th, 13th, 14th for colleague racing. Almendinger gets the best of us here. Uh, as you can see, it's, uh, I mean, f five Toyotas in the top six. Absolute dominance from Toyota today. And is that a cause for concern? This is not good. This is not good if you're any other manufacturer uh, to see Toyota uh, dominating like that if you're not on a Toyota team. It would be great if I was in a Toyota right now. Uh, but what does this mean going into the playoffs? Have they found something? Is it going to be hard for us uh, at Chevrolet and, and Ford uh, as well? In the next episode, we head to Richmond. Uh, it's actually uh, just Cup Series action in Richmond. So uh, I'm looking forward to that one. And as well, we'll start the bracket challenge. And I will have a video separately for that to go over that with a link as well uh, for you guys to fill out. I'll see you guys then. Have a great day.